with the Sony side of ball. Step one, I always recommend everybody take a deep breath and relax. I know it's stressful, I know it seems like this huge decision that's out there, and it is a big decision, don't get me wrong, I don't dismiss that either. Um, but it works out. Just take a deep breath and relax a little bit, um, and then start to take, take the steps that we need to take in order to find problems that you want or fits for you, um, and take, get into that cause and stuff from there. Um, there's a lot of information out there that all works out, same idea. You'll process everything, everybody has different things that they kind of get hung up on, whether it's talking to the coaches or how much information is out there, or finally narrowing down schools. Everybody has kind of their own path. What I hope to do here is kind of talk about the generalities of things, and I will include just swimming in college, but I'll also talk a little bit about the degree process as well during tonight's uh, meeting. But again, it's, it's after this, it kind of just turns into this personalized thing. It's so different from, from even more than just swimming. It's so different from the type of schools that people are looking for, the names, the size, the weather around it, the type of swimming team, the type of training they have. So many different questions to answer if they're important to you, or things to just kind of, I'm okay with almost anything in terms of these categories and leave them alone. Uh, but as we go through there, that's kind of the information that you want to sort out is what's important to you. Uh, utilize your approach to, in, to help with the process. I am available. We'll talk about a little bit about that later on here. Uh, but utilize the approach. Coach Potts, Coach Christine, whoever that may be, can still help uh, along this process. And utilize them. And have them reach out to the coaches. We're happy to send them emails on their behalf uh, and tell them a little bit about you outside of just what your times are. That character reference sometimes goes a long way. There's no guarantee to it. I know a lot of coaches are well connected and well respected, but the bottom line is it still comes down to they deal with a lot of athletes and they try to find that, that right team for them uh, who's available. Uh, for parents, I highly suggest that you are involved, but I also, on the other side, I highly suggest that the swimmer take the lead on this. Uh, we're big believers in that on the team in general, taking that ownership and responsibility of what uh, but summer is why it's important for you to kind of show that leadership and ownership of, of where you are as an athlete as you go to talk to these college coaches. Because so they all know that once you're on campus, it's only you. It's not your parents anymore that are going to help you find your way and things like that. So the more they know that you can do it from the start of these conversations, and that you're ready to kind of take on that responsibility, the more comfortable they're going to be with you coming out of the team and fitting on the team. They're going to understand more. It's not that a parent calling is absolutely bad, I'm not trying to say that either. But if the sort can do it, if the sort can lead the charge, it's important for them to take those steps. Step two, freshman and sophomore years. So I'll get there in a second, but I've changed it a little bit this year um, because the landscape, the recruiting landscape has changed this year. Uh, so I really kind of, the first couple steps are just freshman and sophomore years. It's really just chronological notes, so if you haven't taken them, it's the same steps, you're just going to go through it a little bit faster. Um, the next slide after that used to be broken up in junior year and senior years. It's no longer the case because your career starts a little bit earlier than you want. It starts a little earlier, but I'll go through that in a second. Uh, the first one is what I was talking about. Kind of, you've got to take some self-reflection and figure out Figure out what's important to you in terms of, of school. Uh, the school or academic side, what size school fits best for you. Some are going to be the smaller, smaller school, that's why some want that big name, state school, a lot of people, and big football games, and all of that environment. Uh, most of these are never right or wrong answers, it's purely just what the sort of slash parents want out of their college career. Um, so it's starting to look at what's important to you. That doesn't necessarily have to be one, but it might be for quite a few of you. Uh, we you open to all types of weather. Some people might get kind of laugh at that, um, but I was up, but not really up for all types of weather. I'm not a cold weather guy. I don't like being cold. Um, I could go visit cold weather, but I didn't want to stay there for four, uh, four years at least. Um, and think that I could go through. So that was an important factor for me to consider. It wasn't an absolute yes or no, but for me it was important because I know my first 
personality that I'm looking for. Um, so I think it's important for you to look at that. Now, you have to look at what's important and how big of an option that is compared to the opportunity that presents itself. Uh, but it's still something to be aware of and look at. Uh, do you have an idea of the major that you want to go to the school have? Uh, it doesn't have to be set by any means right now, but do you have an idea so you can look at what schools either have it, or does it give you that path to graduate school within whatever career path that you want to go? Not necessarily the same undergraduate to go to your grad school onto the career path that you want, but it's starting to understand does it actually fit, or is it just the name of a school that you thought has been really big to you forever? Uh, find what fits for you on anything else. Academic levels. Uh, I'm not going to get into a different debate on it. Uh, but there is different importances in terms of some people will put that importance at the biggest academic level school as undergraduate as you possibly can. And some people aren't as worried about undergraduate, they're much more worried about graduate school and that next step to be the bigger name. So they go to a school that they can manage their college career, that they can get good grades, that they can commit themselves to something and do all these still with a great education, but they didn't stretch themselves to try to reach that next level of an academic. That's fully a family decision to make, but I bring it up because I think it's something to think about. Instead of just going for the biggest school and struggling along the way, I've read the books on that actually, my mom and I have some thoughts on it. Um, but it's, it's something for you guys as families to consider on what, what that reach is in terms of academically or where you feel comfortable that you'll go and get a great education, learn a lot, but be able to manage your well in your college career. Um, plenty of other ones, but I just kind of wanted to get the list started here. On the swimming side, and I will tell you here, um, we have a number of older swimmers, but this is for kind of our, our younger swimmers here. We hear a lot about junior year and how important that junior year is. I will tell you, if you're waiting for the junior year for it to be important, then we're behind the eight ball. And I don't mean just this stuff in terms of doing the research for schools and things like that. You can't get through the junior year and decide, oh, this is the year I'm really going to work hard, I'm going to commit myself, and this is the year I'm going to take that huge step up. It's great. It's a little bit behind the ball because you can only go with that year as hard as you may want to work as committed as you are based on the foundation that you built freshman and sophomore year. I have somebody that doesn't do much freshman and sophomore year in terms of really being committed and looking for that next level and working hard and making those steps. And then all of a sudden gets to the junior year and wants to take that step forward and all of a sudden wants to be that extra level motivated, then we're behind. If you've been working and trying to improve the whole way, then we're in good shape. If you just continue to move and try to have that improvement along all three years, freshman and sophomore and junior year. Uh, I'll get there in a second, but this nowadays, now that recruiting trips are actually eligible junior year, uh, this becomes even bigger. That is recruiting wise, but I will tell you it becomes the same as for everybody. Recruiting is one side of it, but coaches, college coaches, and I'll just say coaches in general, would like to get things done as easy as possible, whatever that is. That's our goal to be as efficient with that thing as possible. So recruiting over the next, or just bringing in, let's just say bringing in their team, filling out their team. There's always opportunities for walk-ons. And that's just, you got in school on your own, um, you are there, you meet their time standards for walk-ons, and you get to be part of their team. There's no difference once that happens. The biggest difference was they didn't help you get in. So in that case, that's right now, I would say that's the biggest benefit or advantage over in recruiting is that they're going to help you get it. If you continue up, there's scholarships available and things like that. But the recruiting piece and the nice thing about it is they can have, they can help you get it. They can be as much as a rubber stamp that they get X number of a year. So it's not as much as a scholarship, but it still means something. Ivy Leagues are a prime example of that. We don't actually give athletic aid to anybody, but they have it depends on the school, but let's say five rubber stamps that they can get into school based on that. And I'll tell you on the women's side, I think these are a great opportunity. They are fast, but they're not overly fast by any means. And then if you split out between you know, every right of the school, there's opportunities there for some that are exceptional level without them to be recruited or at least to be assisted in it. Because there's any number of levels between like, what that stamp means. Sometimes it'll be a really wonderful person, they meet all the criteria that the coach knows in terms of grade point average and test scores and things like that. And most of the time, those coaches can just get those swimmers in. And then if you 
becomes kind of uh, just a little bit different in terms of how they handle anybody else. From them. Anybody additional from the other big uh, admissions department say, we really want them, we think their academics are, are great, we'll let them look at that. But if there's any way to get them in, we, we could really use them on the team and they'd be valuable to our team. It's just kind of that next level down that they use all their guaranteed spots, but they can still assist and help people get in get into that school or the admissions uh, process along the way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's the time now. If you're in this meeting at all freshman sophomores, you can see that the time is now to start this process and you start uh, looking at these things. Research different times, research the times on different teams. Uh, when you're doing this research, I'll just add it to the slide. One of the things you want to look at is a little bit depending on what year you are, but you kind of want to look at the top three. In any individual event, the top three gives you a pretty good feel of where that event sits for that team, especially if you look for multiple years. But when you go on their website, there's multiple things you can see. One is the all-time top ten list. So in every event they have, they're going to put a top ten list out for every year. If you fall on the top ten list, you'd probably be recruiting pretty well. If you follow the top three of their current year roster, then it's probably a good bet that you'd be recruited. If you fall outside of that, even though if you're fourth or fifth, it's going to be hard. It's going to depend a little bit on what that means in terms of the time difference from third and fourth. But the thing to keep in mind is there are really only going to be about three people that they have recruited that are on the team in a single event that are kind of their main focus people. The rest of that list is really filled up with different people meets and different people swimming that event kind of as an off event uh, or not really their focus event. So what they what they are looking to bring onto their team and replace would be kind of that top three within their team. Does that make sense? Uh, the next step of that, almost any team that you go look at, um, the top top end will look at is two A scores. Large majority from there will be all about their conference meeting. Their conference meeting is similar, or basically the exact uh, same as your high school league meets. It's your conference uh, competitors that you go against. There they want to see people score. So they can get people scoring, and you'll see when you research how many each team is having scoring. Um, if they have a ton, that's going to be a little harder. They really only have five or so that score individually, because there's a team out there like that. Then it's going to be a little bit more flexible. If you get to the point where you're scoring, then you will absolutely be recruited. Does that make sense? So if you look at kind of let's say those three the top ten list, all time, the top times from the previous year list, look for that top three type, um, and then research the conference times a little bit and see what it takes. What it takes to get the top 16 will be most of the scoring. Uh, you can look at the top 24 to make a final swim. Um, but if you look at those kind of three sets of times, that will really give you a feeling of where that team is and what you're trying to reach for. As a freshman sophomore, you have some time, obviously. As a junior, you have to start to look at, all right, what do I think I can do in about a year uh, to get close to those times? You should, to me, similar to when you're looking academically, you should have some teams that you're reaching for a little bit more. If I really, really commit myself, if I really commit myself, if I'm working hard, I'm coachable, I make all these changes, I think I can hit this time by the end of my junior year. So I go into my senior year and I'm at those times that I want to be for that, whatever that school is going to be. And at times that are solid, as long as I keep improving kind of a similar path, I should be there. And then you have some that all sort of are kind of, you're already in good schools if you like. The time wise, in terms of swimming, you're already there. You're already at a point where you're at least within range, or you kind of know that that range is to be recruited and to be pulled into. Um, but that's a big piece to understand the picture of the team and to understand how that recruiting may go for you or not. Um, wherever you might fall in schools, uh, again, I think that's a little bit different for everybody. If you want to be kind of a bigger fish, you want to go into a team um, that maybe not as committed, that isn't as driven, that, that isn't the fastest one out there. You want to come in kind of the top level and see what you can do to move along. Um, you want to be middle or you want to be kind of throwing in at the bottom and chasing people. If you want to freshman and kind of use 
use that as motivation to be that much faster that year. Uh, but that's, again, individual based on you, and we'll be determined all the time to the bottom. Uh, what meeting do you like to be focused on in college, conference, or nationals? Again, some of this depends on what level you are as a swimmer. Um, but a lot, one of the things that I look at this is, uh, I think the next slide I talked about a little bit more. There's different divisions within college swimming. There is Division 1, obviously there's Division 2, there's Division 3, just within the ACQA. Um, then there's NAIA, which is another whole different level, a whole different organization that runs those sports. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity out there, and the level of swimming changes with it. Um, so, yes, at some point in time, a developing swimmer is always going to be a developing swimmer, and it's going to be harder to get on a college team. Uh, but in general, there should be an understanding that college swimming has a huge range in it that has a lot of opportunity for people to swim on an actual college team. Then you add another set of club programs within a college environment, but you can still go swim, you can still be with a group environment. That's a little bit less of a commitment and focus for you. There's a lot of opportunities for swimming overall in college that you can research. But this comes from uh, like let's just I'll use the top end because it's a little bit easier for me. But somewhere we can make Division One school and, and be there. It's going to be a mid Division One school. It's going to be something that has conference lead. It's going to be a very big step to make this into a Division One swimming. It is the fastest speed in the world in terms of the overall depth and the true speed in the swimming. Uh, so it's a big jump to get there. So or when they look at Division Two, the open to Division Two swim school that then. Commitment level, where you've been, 
be open and honest with that. You want to understand kind of where you're swimming and where you're at. Um, sometimes, if you have a pretty good improvement path, then go ahead and add that on there so they can see kind of that line and where you are going. Uh, but you want to get that out to colleges.
even senior year, I've sent some people on a scholarship. I've sent people that have gone on recruiting trips at 16 years old, even in their senior year. That means those same athletes starting junior year, if they went on a recruiting trip like that, would be going to a college environment, which as much as they may go dry at certain times of the season during the recruiting season, is not a dry place. And they're 15 years old. So I do not encourage, I don't think it's needed, one. I get that some, some of the recruiting is time-based and it is pressure and they're going to fill spots and I get that side of it. Um, but I'm a big believer that we push at least to the spring of junior year. I still think it's early, but they have to start making decisions at some point. Um, so what I've done with most of the juniors that I'm talking about, recruit trips and things like that, I've asked them to kind of push off and, and try to get it to spring. I think spring's great for them. Or after kind of bars, they'll be able to go without everything else is going on in the fall, and they can get one or two in. Right now, that's kind of our recommendation. Um, it's fine at time if you're just even six months at that point in time. It can be a big difference in maturity and how they handle those relationships. So that's kind of where we are. Um, but I, I'll be honest, that's still ongoing and will change as we move forward. This is literally the first month. Uh, on this. So colleges are still trying to figure out and me as the coach in terms of what I'm going to recommend. Uh, so I'm going to try to figure out. I will tell you uh, I'm here in, this in terms of needing to feel like you have to be there, you have to go on recruit trips, or you have to do all these things and because it's all time based and they only have so many spots they're going to fill them up. Nobody can actually sign until their senior year in November as the first opportunity. You'll hear people committing, you'll hear verbals and things like that, which is kind of binding, depending on the coach and where it is. But in the end, it doesn't actually mean anything until November of their senior year, um, and they can actually sign the letter of intent and the thing that says, yep, I'm going to school, that's it, and that's what they can offer. Nobody else can offer you anything else to sign or give it to you before that. So again, I look at this and I just don't want to rush trying to force it in this junior year because as we go through and as we have more juniors going on recruit trips, I will almost guarantee you we have more and more kids that will back out of those commitments and that's going to throw the recruiting whole picture out of whack a little bit. When we start to have kids that go, you know what, that coach is left when I sign and they're not there anymore, I'm not going to go to that school anymore. I'm a year older, I don't like that school anymore, I don't like something that happened, I don't have to go, and they're not tied to me in the summer, they don't have anything to feed them. The coaching side, at least you have a little bit that they have their rep reputation to hold up. So if they start going, no, I don't want to get you in anymore, no, you're not working anymore, or whatever, there's, I'm sharing a lot of information just so you understand. On the other side of things, there's worry that coaches will say, yeah, junior year, yeah, we want you, you look great, and then, Get injured, or you know, so fast that junior year, or whatever, and then all of a sudden the next year the coach goes, Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get you in school. If they can't guarantee you junior year that they can get you in school, it's just impossible. They don't know what your junior year grades are yet, which is a huge year for them to judge off of in terms of your ability to keep good grades and things like that. So they can look at it and go, Sorry, I can for commissions with them to get you in for whatever reason. I hope that stuff doesn't happen. But the earlier this goes, the more that's, that stuff's going to happen. If you follow, follow college, college recruiting and things like that, people will commit and be committed and go all over the place all the time. Hopefully it doesn't, but I'm worried about this. But there is a push to push it back into the spring as the opening. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm continuing researching and starting to narrow down your school list a little bit. Uh, I think a lot of emails, like you said, just to, so you are aware, there's usually an assistant coach that is in charge of recruiting and a recruiting coordinator. Um, so more than likely, you're not going to hear from the head coach every time, if at all, during that recruiting period. Um, and that's okay. Uh, they will talk about it. Uh, junior days, again, this is likely changing, but it's something to keep in mind. It's not true fully recruiting trips. Uh, oftentimes, they'll have like junior days and invite someone out to go see the school and be there. You pay for it, you cover it, but they have it all kind of packaged together um, so that you can see it. Uh, these may be going by the wayside as the recruit trips come up, uh, but I think it's something at this point 
still to keep an eye out for, especially if you're looking at local schools, and they have them as well. Uh, talking to coaches on the fall, I'll go through this briefly, but at some point in time, if you're going to college, you're probably going to have to start talking on the phone, whether it's a true recruiting trip or not. Um, be yourself, remember it's only a conversation. It's not a test that you say a certain thing, you're perfect thing, or anything like that. They want to get to know your swimmers, and they want to see your personality. So be willing to just be yourself and have a conversation with them. Uh, that said, be prepared with some standard questions that you'd like to know about the school or the team or, or things of that nature. Um, different questions at different times. A little bit initially, just kind of get to know them. Feel it out. Don't, go, don't jump straight into do you have money or do you guarantee a spot on the team or things of that nature that are a little bit harder to figure out. Get to know each other a little bit more. Uh, kind of those first thought. Coaching philosophy is great to you know the team, culture, life, things like that. Uh, later on, you start to go into, for you or them, you don't want to push off too long either. Uh, but get to know them a little bit first, and then start doing the questions that are important to you and maybe limiting factors. And that's okay. It's okay to ask a limiting factor if you need some sort of financial assistance. Then it can be earlier in that conversation to not waste your time or your pay. Both sides of it. appreciate it as long as that's kind of brought up with respect and just ask, asking what they think is possible. And that means on the side of them helping you with just the like, financial aid type packet or the side of, of kind of um, recruiting money or athletic money. Um, reminder not to boss in response time. This is what I just talked about again. I just wanted to know here again. Um, you want to focus on the current team a lot or the recruits that all I can do in this Just as a heads up, I think, think everybody's aware at this point. Um, an athlete being recruited, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that. Um, an athlete being recruited puts himself or herself on a whole different level than a standard um, student. And one of the reasons I bring this up is this one here. It's absolutely utilized as a school counselor, but keep in mind that they don't really know the, the athletic side of things. We've gotten into different conversations of which well, some will go into their college counselor and come out crying and come to me all upset because they can't get into schools they want or whatever. And all of the schools are going, one, they're going to be not only just get in, they're going to be recruited to that school, and other times they're actually having scholarships come from it. When the college counselor sat there and told them to tears that no, you're not going to be eligible for that school, you don't have enough, good enough grades, you just, you, that needs to be off your list. And instead they go to school and actually have a scholarship. It doesn't happen all the time, and not to that extreme, but keep things in mind, keep things in mind in what I say as well. Um, but keep things in mind that they don't always know the entire picture. Even somebody whose job it is to help people get into school doesn't know the entire picture and doesn't, definitely doesn't know that particular individual's picture in terms of what somebody can do for them, what level they are at, things of that nature. Um, when I say recruited, uh, that goes back to kind of those lists of the three things I talked about. The top ten lists, the top three on the team times, uh, or scoring at conference meets. If you're within kind of uh, that list somewhere, chances are you'll be recruited to some level. Well. Again, recruiting has kind of different levels along the way. But as soon as you're recruited, as soon as they want, the coach wants to talk to you and wants to help you in and things like that, you become a much different um, person along the application process than just a normal student. So many will set you way apart. If you utilize the right, find the right schools that will allow you to do that and still be excited about it. Okay. Um, just real quick, we have anybody going on um, recruit trips at all different levels schools take recruit trips. Uh, there's five official recruit trips and then unofficial is just when you go visit the campus. Um, you do that however much fits into our summer schedule, I'll put it that way. Um, of which we are absolutely supportive. I believe that it's needed to kind of use schools and kind of spread it out a little bit. Um, but it's, it's working with your coaches still. It's not like, oh, I'm going to miss these three days because I want to see college and it's important for me to see these colleges. We agree, it's important to see colleges, but there's a way that we can figure that out and make sure you're still swimming and make sure you're still active. And we don't ruin the consistency of your training just because this is important. Just because it's important. To doesn't mean it won't take negative impact on your swimming. So again, I fall back on work with your coach.
coaches and make sure that we cover any time we go away for anything really. But college college trips is, is are included in that. Uh, two signing periods, only senior year, November and April. The only time, two times that you can actually sign a piece of paper and be fully committed to where we need to sign and really back out without some sort of penalty to that. Um, but that's it. Those are the only two times. Uh, junior and senior year, you can take a long time that list and narrow it down. That's there twice because I've merged the junior and senior years here. Uh, we continue to do that with group trips. I think they're a valuable experience, but remember while you're there, you're there to evaluate the school, to evaluate the team. It's not just going to have fun. Uh, it's to be responsible, to be prepared in college for social situations. Um, don't allow yourself, you know, way too many stories of uh, people who get lost in terms of those college trips. So be responsible for it, have fun, but be responsible when you're there, when the parties in every, every situation. It just gives you a better shot to go to that school as well. Uh, sales call, don't make a decision immediately when you return from a school, group trip, or I would suggest any school really. Uh, there's a lot of times where people will come back just all excited. Everybody was just hyping them up the whole time and everything they saw was perfect and it was a beautiful weekend and all these things. Uh, but it's a small snapshot. Don't do it just on that emotion. I think that's great. It's, it's awesome. I don't want to tamper that by any means. But just wait on it a little bit. Okay? When, when that happens, when you have that excitement, just wait even another week. Let, it, let the novelty or the, just the excitement and that emotion wear off a little bit and see if it's still there. If it's still there for you in a week or two after that, then absolutely go ahead and do it and be done and take the pressure off of you and, and make that decision early. Um, but don't do it just to make a decision, just to get out of the way because you're excited. Does that make sense? Um, Sam and I talked about it up here. Uh, manage, or not slide, manage the fact that it's missed. It's important to go see the schools, whether it's in group trips or otherwise. Uh, but let's make sure that we're managing practices so that you are actually qualified for the schools that we're looking for by the time we get there. And you're from that other way. Um, just a bit more here, and then I'll open up for questions. Uh, I think this organization is, is important. I like this type of, of thing in terms of spreadsheets and, and keeping it all there. Uh, so you guys can manage it a little bit differently to you. But I think it's important to understand the things that are uh, going to make the decision for you in one way or another. Um, and then the list of schools and what you learn about on calls and emails and taking notes and seeing um, a column of do they have my major, a column of how do they train, whatever those questions are you're going to ask, but a column of it so you can kind of put that on. And then if it comes down to that tough decision on I have this great thing, I have these three schools, and I love them all, and they all want me to go there. How do I find find the line of that and make that decision? That just gives you that idea to see that snapshot of uh, these are the schools, these are kind of the, the plus and minuses of what they have, what they don't have, and which one just, just I think it'll help that process to have it all down somewhere where you can go back and reference. And then if you have emails and things like that on there, then you can go and continue to communicate easily. Um, be prepared to make decisions. You no, know, not all of our teenagers on this team are very good at making decisions all the time. Uh, but this is one that eventually you're going to have to make before you just decide that. I think one of the things that I would suggest is take away the pressure of, I mean, I have to make this perfect decision. It's this huge life decision. It's four years of my life, plus it's the school that I go to and my career and all of these things. It's big, but it's not that big. Doesn't, if it doesn't work, you can move. I'm sorry, parents don't agree. But if it doesn't work, and it's not the right school a year from now, when you're actually in school and going through it, then I think that you should change. I think you should make that move and not be afraid of that. There's plenty of people that move schools and then live out the rest of their college career there and run it, and then go on and everything worked out perfectly. No. As a high school student, they didn't make the right decision on their first college. I think that's okay. I don't think that's, that's the end of the world by any means. Um, so take some of that pressure off of you and just start to make decisions on what you truly believe is best right now. That's the only decision you can actually make. Okay. Uh, when you say no, don't worry. Be quite a member that coach will you know more than yes in this process. No coach, even somebody like Stanford, who doesn't have to give it all that often. Um, unfortunately, they, uh, Anybody has to compete against them. Uh, most of 
who are going to have at least double the number that they're recruiting to what they take, and more like three, four, or five times as much. So that means five times as much you know you're a tech. You don't have to want to go that they can't bring on. Uh, but they're in here. People are going to go to different schools. It's all different. So don't feel bad about saying no. Don't feel bad about saying, you know, I'm already there on my list. If somebody does reach out to you, if you're not interested, I'm already there on my list. But I'd love to keep keep your mind if, if things change or if that list doesn't play out the way that I think. I'd love to reach back out and see if you're still interested. Keep the door open. Let them know. Right? You know right now, I kind of narrowed it down to a manageable amount that I, I can go through. But if those don't work out, I'll, I'll reach out and see if you can go through that, that process. Uh, that's all part of taking that responsibility. Um, and then, please, I think some get so stressed that it's not even exciting to make the decision. It's just like I just wait off of them and they're just like tired almost. Um, use that energy. Be excited. This is a fun time for you guys. Be excited when you finally make that decision. Wear that sweatshirt all around. Do all those. Do all of those things. It's a big deal. Um, Started this last year, I'm happy to do it. Uh, juniors and seniors still at this point. We'll see if I can open it up. But I want to make sure that I can manage my time. Um, junior year mentoring, uh, which is essentially reach out and I'll, I'll just help talk through the college process. I'll help you talk through kind of your individual circumstance a little bit differently. Um, it'll still kind of, or still can largely be done through emails, but I set up and I'll sit down with them. Normally, the first email when I hear from somebody, I'll fire out an email of certain questions that I want answered, kind of where you are with your list, uh, what's important to you, some different things that I have that help me then be prepared for when we sit down and meet. Uh, but then we sit down and meet, and we'll talk about kind of where you are in the process and what those next steps are and what kind of needs to be done for your goals and what teams you want to be uh, shooting for in this process in terms of what's going to take somewhat to get to there. So I'll let you go somewhat working with your coaches and you kind of work that step in the water so we can be as well in order to try to reach those teams and reach those levels of swimming that we want. Um, this year again, seniors are still welcome, so I call it junior year mentoring. The main seniors that want to sit down now and talk about it, how we do that as well to make sure that we're, because we're still kind of getting this rolling, make sure that we're getting everybody started and going. Seniors and still kind of just picking this up. It's fun, we can get it done and it'll work. Um, but I want to be available for them to help, help do that. And I think that's it. So, sorry, went on for a while there, but I uh, wanted to open up for questions if you have any. Again, I know this becomes pretty personal, um, so that those meetings can be set up as well. They kind of go with individual circumstances. Uh, but is there anything that I can miss or added questions in your mind that I don't know to repeat? So you said D3 is on athletics. And so when a coach is recruiting a swimmer who might not have that athletics, but they might be able to be quite often, can they still be mm -hmm. able to Absolutely. So the school and the overall organization lean towards that. Just want to make sure that everybody knows they lean towards you. I'm going to decide more. Yeah. Um, but the coaching side is they're still going to have a range of, and most coaches, especially coaches that are there for a while, 10 years coaches, are going to know kind of where that range is. Um, I'll tell you, we were shocked. We were shocked at the level, and I understand the trend, my son is fast, but we're still shocked at the level they said would be okay for him to get into school at part of the reason I'm fine. And for us, we, we part of it was we wanted to chase this swimming dream. Um, but the other part is I don't think Harvard is the right school for China. Like it's a great school, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's right for, for China. So we're not where he's at right now. So we were like, it was an honor, it was great to do it, um, but I don't think it was necessarily the right one. Uh, but there's a big range in some of those top big schools and what they can get. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not talking like two, five to get it to a Ivy League school. But in terms of the numbers you hear of general academics, if this was more like three, three type of um, overall Q, um, GPA you get in with an SAT score of yeah, 39 or something. Um, so yes, it's all individualized a little bit in that, but there's absolutely a range that they can get in. They want to feel comfortable that 
that the student can handle the academic load. So when, when it comes to that, that's what they're evaluating more than you meet the standards of the academic that we normally run in school. If they can handle the load and, and balance that and they're graduate and they're comfortable that they're going to be there for four years of graduating to be that student athlete, they're happy. That's, that's the bigger concern on the student athlete side is are they going to be able to handle school's load and graduate four years from now? For most of you, that's a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Good question? Uh, what, what do you think is the number of school scenario down to the athlete? So, in the end, like what? So, it's like, like what? I, I think, sorry, um, freshman and sophomore, I figure out maybe up to 20, it's a yeah. big number. Um, you don't need that many, but no more than that. And then start kind of narrowing it down, junior year, maybe 10. And then just kind of start narrowing it down. If you can get, kind of works out well, if you can get to the senior year, or whenever that final process is going to you're down to kind of that five, mm -hmm. it matches the recruiting trip. But I find that to be kind of a manageable number. Um, if you can get it to there, Yes. Now, some of them budget-wise may vary, like they're going to pay for everything there, but you need to buy your flight. So they'll save on them. some of those be schools that the athletic department, and in some cases, if they don't have the budget to fly everybody out, they may share the cost of something like that. But recruiting trips in general are covered by the team of the colleges. Any other questions for Yes.
more you reach out and introduce yourself and then give them updates throughout the year, two or three times, you'll have that connection. Yes? Do you recommend emailing the assistant code or the head code? If they have it listed as a recruiting coordinator, you can email that person, just that person. Otherwise, I'd go ahead and uh, email us that. Okay. They all, it's, it's, email is easy to manipulate. They'll either look at it and go, or they'll look at it and go down to the time and decide whether to file or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Right. You're never going to be upset that you don't yeah. include them. Uh -huh. So, if you know the recruiting then you don't have to respect and send it to everybody. Uh, but if you don't, or if you want to send it to everybody, you send it to everybody. And you still recommend putting your times in the email, even though you already answered that line in the questionnaire that they have? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. The questionnaire is going to be separate and it will always be connected to the email. Um, but it doesn't have to, you don't have to just replicate everything in the email, but just put kind of those top end three times type of situation. Uh, you don't have to list all the time or anything like that. Just your best in time. Just to kind of reference where they are. Is there a template for the resume? We can, yes. I should be able to find I don't have one on hand. Uh, mm -hmm. But we can find that. Absolutely. I think that makes sense. Yeah. So I'll try, to, I'll try to follow up with kind of a, a template or an uh, example of some of those. Anything else? All right, thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming.